not many families can go back to 1790 or 1830 time frame and say, this is the house my relatives were born in. The driving force behind this effort was a lady named Shirley Faye Hill, a direct descendant of Obadiah Shirley who lived in Texas. She was a lobbyist for an oil company. And she came back looking for her roots and saw this house was scheduled for demolition. And she pitched a fit and she threatened to have Shirley family members from all over America come lay down in front of the bulldozers and get news down here with camera crews to show the destruction of this historical residence. And so she mobilized and threatened the owner of the property to give them. They says, what will it take to get you off our back? She said, give me an acre in the house and we'll leave you alone. And they did that. And the Shirley family came from all over America to work on this themselves. And so they came in and cleaned up and put another roof on it and tried to stabilize the house. And I've been in charge of maintaining the house and due to some fortunate contributions from the Shirley family, we've been able to uh, move forward with the restoration of the house. The way we know the history is they had a family Bible, probably a leather covered Bible, and they, all they had left was the cover. But inside the cover, they had put down a little town in Germany that it came from, and I got okay. from Germany to Holland to New Amsterdam to North Carolina. They had the names and dates they were born and died, so they had their family history written down in the cover of the Bible. How about that? This uh, original cabin here dates from the 1790 time frame in its construction. It was just trees that were cut down, notched to stack up like Lincoln logs, and uh, no nails were used in the construction of this cabin, so it was very primitive. The gaps between the log was covered by mud chinking to keep the cold weather out in the wintertime. In the summertime, they could take the chinking out and get a little airflow through the cabin. And then in 1830, when the new part was built on here, this clapboard was covered the log cabin, so all you saw was this type wall here, and that's what preserved the original log cabins here, was that they were enclosed with wood. So we have this land here. We have Noel Massey with a square mile. He, he gives his son Ansel Massey 150 acres. And Ansel probably built that first cabin here because it was built around 1790. Then you have Obadiah Shirley living in Avo County who moves up to here with better land and cheaper land that he owned in Avo County. He's a farmer and he buys this 150 acres from Ansel Massey. Okay. And so that's how Obadiah Shirley got the property. He bought it in 1828. At that point, the original log cabin was kind of small. He and his wife started having 10 children. They were running out of space fast. So a cabin was disassembled and reassembled on the original cabin on this south end of the house here. And then that wasn't enough room. So Obadiah Shirley built about one third more onto the house here and put a second floor on top of the two log cabins. And then he enclosed everything with boards so it didn't look like a log cabin because by 1830, it was considered low class to still live in a little, a little uh, pig pen type log cabin with a dirt floor. So he upgraded it to look like a plantation house. When the log cabin was expanded in 1830, they just sawed down through the logs and the walls on both sides here. They boxed in the logs so you couldn't see them. So you couldn't tell this had been a log cabin with a hole cut in the side. The log, top log is an example of the original logs. And this actually is holding the house together, this huge beam right here. It was cut with an ax going this way and then that foot edge came this way and kind of trued up a flat surface to put the interior boards on. By 1830, steam powered sawmills were in the area and you could cut the logs into boards like this. So this, these are tongue and groove boards, which was state of the art at that time to, to cover the logs with to keep the cold air out and warm air in. When you find an old house that's still in existence of this time period, you'll have two characteristics. One, it'll be on a well-drained site so the termites didn't eat it up. The second would have well-built chimneys so it didn't catch on fire because if your house caught on fire, there was no way to put the fire out except one bucket at a time from your well, and by that time, the house would be burnt down. Originally, the food was prepared and cooked in this fireplace right here. You would have uh, pots with legs on them you could put in the coal. You could put a, a Dutch oven with coals on top of the lid. We we're fortunate to have an original door from probably a 1790 time frame because these are handmade hinges that are bratted to the door and you have the original latch string door, which was common to most of the log cabins in this area or in the United States. 
It's a very simple latch in which you had a latch string that if you brought it inside, the door was locked. If you put it outside, you could pull on the little string and it would lift the bar right there and you could open the door. This one had a little bevel on it, so it kind of ride in the bevel and drop in the slot there and you could open and close it like that. So this is the original door in the upstairs area and it has a very interesting lock called the Norfolk latch. It was invented in England in the 1820 time frame. This was probably imported from England by 1830 when it was bought and put in the house. It has a modern type thumb latch here, but on the other side, it didn't have a thumb latch on the inside. It just has a little hook here that you raise the latch up and they've worn the corner of the board off, raising the latch up so it latches like that. So the door's locked right now. But to open it, you just stick your finger in there and pull it open. So this is a state-of-the-art latch of the 1820 time frame. And our modern doors evolved from this thumb latch. Still use this system here. Just they didn't think of the other side. Well, our plan is to keep it maintained essentially in the way it is now. It's a historical preservation with limited restoration as we might do some restoring in the same character that it was originally. But it, it will be an educational exhibit to show the young people and the present generations how people lived during that period of time and what a struggle it was to uh, get shelter from the wind and rain and what people did to do that with. So we like for it to be open by appointment to historical groups or school children to come see an old house like this. Because there's no old houses like this around that are this primitive.